In this video, we're going to define what we mean by the derivative of a function and then show how to calculate the derivative for special kinds of functions. So in this case, we're just going to focus our attention on functions of this form, y equals x to the n. So in other words, something like y equals x squared, or actually y equals x would uh, also fit into this class of functions, or y equals x cubed. So first of all, what's the definition of a derivative? Over here, we have the graph of f of x equals x squared. In other words, right now we're looking at this function right here, f of x equals x squared. And let's suppose we want to know the derivative at some point x. And it doesn't matter what point. The uh, formulas we're going to come up with depend on x, but they're the same no matter where, uh, what x we're dealing with. So let's just pick a point at random. Let's say, uh, well, let me say x equals 0.5, just to make life maybe a little simpler. 0.5. Okay, so we want to know what the derivative is at this point p1 down here. And it's defined to be the slope of the tangent curve at P1. Well, what's the tangent curve or the tangent line, really? Well, here is a line going through P1 and going through another point, P2, which is on the curve y equals f of x. The red curve is y equals f of x, and the black line is, right now it's just a line, but it's going to become the tangent line. So how do we make it the tangent line? Well, we move P2 closer to P1, and we do that by um, reducing the distance between P1 and P2. Now that distance we're calling h. h is the distance from along the x-axis from P1 to P2. So watch what happens as we reduce h, as we let h go to 0. P2, of course, is going to come uh, down the curve, and the black line is going to be approaching the tangent. And we keep going and going, and actually take the limit. After a while, you know, h at this point is, uh, let's make h like uh, 1 over a million. Okay, so get a 6 in there. Let's see. Okay, I've got a 6 in there. So h, of course, is very small. And after a while, you can't see any motion in this tangent curve at all. So we're pretty close to the limit right now. And that tangent is defined to be dy dx. m is dy dx. Let's go back to, uh, uh, you know, you can't see dy dx is so small, you really can't see them. So let's go back to our situation where h, h is... Uh, actually uh, larger, so we can see what dy dx is. Well, dy, <coughs> first of all, dx. dx is this distance from p1 along the x-axis till we get uh, under p2. And then p, or dy, is the distance from here up to p2. Now, in terms of our functions, we can express that in this way. The slope is the difference between f at x plus h, so that's f out here at p2, minus f of x, which is f evaluated back here at p1. And then we divide, well, that's, that's um, dy. That's the, denom the numerator. And then uh, the denominator, dx, is just h, which is the difference between the x-coordinate of this point and the x-coordinate of the point P2. So that is um, the slope for the line, but the line, again, is not the tangent yet. We have to let h go to 0 for uh, this be to become the tangent line. And let's see if we can see what that is. Um, you know, we, we just calculated it numerically, but let's see what we can uh, show it to be using formulas. So what we're going to do is uh, evaluate the functions f at x plus h and f at x and work things out. So to do that, I just have to drag and drop this onto my calculator there. And notice the first thing, that is 
f of x plus h since the function f just squares things. So whatever you put inside, let me go back to there, whatever you put inside the uh, parentheses there is just going to get squared. That's, so let's do that. And now we're going to take this h plus x and expand it. And I, I want to do it in a certain way so it doesn't do too much. The program has a tendency to go overboard. So I just want to expand that. Now what do I mean by expand it? I just mean multiply it out. You know, it's uh, that should be something that you're familiar with. If I expand that, it's going to be x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. So I'm just multiplying that whole thing out. And now look at this formula here. If you look at it, you'll notice we have an h squared inside here and a minus x squared there. So that's going to cancel out. And uh, let's do that. Let's just do a simplify and we'll see that uh, the x squared terms cancel out. And we're left with just the rest. But now look at this. We're dividing by h. And uh, that means we can divide each of these terms by h. So if we do that, that's going to get rid of this h, and we're going to be left with a 2x. And this is just going to turn into h squared over h, which is um, h. So let's do that. Let's, uh, again, I think expand all terms. We'll do that distribution. So that's our slope for h. And right now, h is 1. So that's not our derivative. The derivative is defined to be the limit of this thing as h goes to 0. Well, it's pretty clear what's going to happen as h goes to 0. This is actually going to go to 2 times x. And 2 times x um, happens to be 1 in this case. But let, let me put this in there another way. Right now, this 1 down here is saying, yes, this equality is true. It's not telling us what these values are. It's just saying that they are equal. But we can look at them explicitly like this here. OK, so right now, uh, m is the slope, but it's not the derivative. It's only der the derivative as we let h go to 0. So let's do that numerically just to see what it gets closer and closer to. As we decrease h, this formula is going down. Looks like it's approaching 1 as a limit. And uh, you know, at least out to this many decimal places, it's uh, equal to 1. Uh, now, if we went more decimal places, or if we showed more decimal places, we would see that it's not quite 1 yet. But we can keep pressing that h down and get it as close to 1 as we want. In fact, you know, you look at this formula, it's pretty clear what's going to happen as h goes to 0. This thing here is going to go to just 2 2x. In other words, we can, if we want to see what the limit is, uh, in this special case where this is defined, we just substitute h equals 0, and we get 2x. And that's the proof of this. f prime of x, which is defined to be the limit as h goes to 0 of um, you know, this formula here, which works out to be this formula here, that comes out to be 2x, so that's the derivative. And you know, notice how that came, where the 2 came from. When we expanded h plus x, we ended up with a 2hx. And then we divided by h, we ended up with just a 2x. And what happened to the x squared? How come that's not in our final picture? Because we have x squared here and a minus x squared here, so it disappears. So you can sort of see where that 2 comes from. It comes from this expansion of h plus x squared. Now let's take a look at the an, another one. Uh, let's look at uh, y equals x cubed. And again, here's the graph over here. And let me start out with an h equal to 1. So that's not the derivative, or the slope that I have here is not the derivative. It's just the slope of the line. To get the derivative, I have to let p2 uh, move down onto p1. In other words, I have to let h go to 0. And we can see that it's not the derivative yet, because 
uh, as we'll see, the derivative turns out to be 0.75, and the slope at this point is only 3.25. But, you know, of course, watch what happens as I make h smaller and smaller. This slope is going to approach the derivative. Keep going. I can make it as close as I want. It's 7, 6. Now it's 7, 5. And it's not exactly that yet. If I looked at more decimal places, they would be different. But I can get it as close as I want by making h smaller and smaller. So again, that's, you know, as that limit as h goes to 0 is called the derivative of f at x. And let's again see, now here's the formula for the, the derivative. It's 3 times x squared. And you know, you should be asking yourself, where does that 3 come from? And where does the squared come from? Well, the procedure is the same as before. We take our m. And again, let's put our h back out here to 1 so we can sort of see the pieces of m. Uh, m is the ratio of the difference in f over the difference in x, which is just h. Uh, so we're talking about, you know, the the difference between here and here is dy, or df if you want to uh, focus on the function uh, notation. And the difference between here and here, you know, the point right underneath p2, is just h. So I'm dividing by, uh, sometimes you'll see it called dx. h is the same as dx. Now watch what happens when I uh, substitute into this formula for f. Now f is now x cubed, so if I make that substitution, I get this thing here. And now I'm going to expand it, just like I did before. I'm going to multiply that out. And the thing to focus on is this term here. I have a 3 h x squared. In other words, you know, the exponent started out as a cubed, but this term is now reduced by, uh, the exponent reduced by 1 in this term, and I see a 3 in front of it. And now why do I focus on that term? Well, I don't need to focus on the x cubed term because the x cubed term, like before, is going to disappear. I have a, a negative version of x cubed there, so that's going to disappear. And why don't I focus on this here? You know, why is that something I'm not that interested in? Well, it has an h squared in it. And if I divide through by h, I'm still going to have an h in this term. And remember, we're interested in what happens with when h goes to 0. So this term is going to disappear. And the same with this h cubed. It's going to disappear as h goes to 0. The only term that's not going to disappear is this one here. And you say, well, it has an h in it, so why doesn't it disappear? Well, remember, we're dividing by h. So that h is going to cancel out, and we're going to left with 3x squared. And uh, uh, as h goes to 0, it's no longer impacted by h. So let's work this out. Let's just see what uh, happens here. OK, so I'm going to just simplify things. And we saw the x cubed disappear. Now I have uh, division by 8, so I'm going to divide each of those terms by 8. So I expand all terms. That should do that. And now I see uh, 3x squared is the only thing in there without an h in it. The other two have h's in them. So as h gets smaller and smaller, this end approaches you know, the things with h in it approach 0. So we can take that limit by just setting h equal to 0. Whenever you have a, a limit and it's defined at h equals 0, then you can just do that substitution. Sometimes we'll see we'll have a, a ratio where the, neither the top or the, the bottom is defined at h equals 0, and then you have to get clever. But in this uh, simple case, we can just make that substitution, and we see that our slope is 3x squared. So that is, by definition, the derivative of f at x. And the notation is f prime of x equals 3x squared. All right, so I think you can see the pattern now. In general, 
what you know what do we do with this 3 here the 3 comes down and multiplies the, times the x and then the exponent is reduced by 1 and that is the general rule if ever you have this simple function x to the n the derivative is n prime or to n just n times x to the n minus 1 so the two things you do is you multiply by the exponent n and then you reduce the exponent by 1. And the proof of that is something called the binomial theorem. So I'll just uh, mention that and um, you know, I won't do a formal proof but you know, you'll certainly get the idea. If I take x plus h to the fourth and expand it, in other words, work it all out, do that multiplication, and multiply this thing by itself four times, I get the following formula. Let's just do it. If I uh, expand it, I get something involving h to the fourth and uh, x to the fourth and so on. But focus on this term right here. You're always going to have a term in there that has the 4 as a coefficient and a reduced uh, exponent here and 1 h in there and just like before when we divide by h that's going to disappear and you're going to be left with 4x cubed and all the other things are going to disappear the x to the fourth will disappear because we're subtracting f of x from this thing. I, you know, that's not in this picture. I'm just looking at one term of our definition for the derivative. But the x to the fourth will disappear uh, because uh, we're subtracting off x to the fourth. And all the others will disappear because when we divide them through by h, you're still left with some h. And h goes to 0, they go to 0. So that's uh, an outline of the proof. And uh, what else do we want to say? Okay, let's uh, let's just have a little quiz here. All right, on this side we have the function f of x, and on this side we have f prime of x. So your job is to calculate or guess what f prime of x is, and uh, you know stop the video and figure it out, and then start start the video and you'll see if you're right or wrong. Let's start with this one here. Now some of these we haven't really mentioned explicitly but you should be able to see how our procedure works even in this case. If we're dealing with a constant the graph of a constant looks like this. It's a straight line. So what's the slope of this straight line? What's a dy? dy is 0 since p1 and p2 are the same. Uh, so dy is always going to be 0. That means this formula up here is always going to be 0 no matter what h is. So the limit as h goes to 0 is always going to be 0. So the derivative of a constant is going to be 0. And another way of seeing that is that uh, you know this is really 5 times x to the 0, you know, x to the 0 is 1. And if we differentiate this using our rule, we take the 0 and bring it down. So it's 0 times x, and this gets reduced to x to the minus 1. But as soon as we put that 0 in the coefficient, we ended up with 0. So in other words, if I differentiate uh, let me get rid of that again. If I differentiate this with respect to x, let's see what the program tells us it is. I can do that by just saying differentiate, and it's 0. So the answer to that one is 0. All right, what about x to the 6? Well, stop the video if you want to think about it for a second. But let's let the program do that. And the program says 6 times x to the 5th. So follow that procedure. We took the exponent and put it in front and then reduced the exponent. Now what about this? 
Well, we haven't shown this explicitly, but uh, whenever you multiply a function by a constant, you can sort of just ignore the constant at first when you're taking the derivative. Just take the derivative of this piece here. So the derivative of that is going to be 6x to the fifth, but then it's 6 times x to the fifth, but the 3 is there, so you really have to take that into account. So the whole thing is going to be 18 times x to the fifth. So let's see if the program gives us that. And there it is, 18 times x to the fifth. Now here's another one. Again, we haven't shown this explicitly, and uh, to show it explicitly is a couple of ways to do it. It's not hard, but it's almost intuitively obvious, so we're not going to get into it in great detail. If I have a sum or difference of uh, functions like this, to, the, to take the derivative, I can take the derivative of each one individually and then just add them together. So this first one is going to be 4 times 5 is 20 x to the third minus 2 x to the 1, which is just x, and then this gets killed off. So let's see if the program gives us that. And it does. So that's the answer to that one. All right, now here is a curveball. What about this one here? x to the minus 1. Well, we're going to follow the same procedure as before. We take the exponent, bring it down, put it in front, multiply by minus 1, and reduce the exponent. Now, if we reduce the exponent, you know, in terms of a number line, we want to move it further to the left. So it's now at minus 1. If we reduce it by 1, we're going to end up with a minus 2. Uh, so let's see what the program tells us about this. Okay, there's the minus in front. And the program puts the uh, x squared on the bottom. But remember, that's really the same as uh, we can bring it up top and negate the exponent. So we can write it either way. You know, this is, uh, uh, you know, this this sort of follows our pattern. We've reduced the exponent by one, so it goes from minus one to minus two, and we took the exponent er, and put it in front. So that's where the negative comes from. And finally, let's look at this one here. Um, <coughs> Same as before, uh, we're going to take 3 times 2 is 6x squared. But what about this thing here? Well, x to the 4th is really x to the minus 4. Uh, let's, you know, let's just look at our... Uh, we can do this. That's x to the minus 4. And how do we deal with these exponents? We bring them down and reduce them. So it's going to be a minus 20 outside when we multiply it by the 5. And if we reduce minus 4, again, picture the, the number line. You're at minus 4, and you want to reduce it by 1. You're going to end up with minus 5. So let me see uh, if I leave that grouping in there, if the program knows what to do. I don't know if it does or not. Uh, OK, it does, but it, it keeps track of that minus 4 explicitly. It shows you explicitly what it's doing with it. If I get rid of the grouping, it'll become uh, what we said before, x to the fifth on the bottom. And of course, I can put that up top if I want to. All right, now let's actually uh, look at some of these functions here. Uh, here are the answers. And let's look at uh, this function here is kind of interesting. The, you know, this one here. If I plug that into my uh, function generator and take the derivative f prime of x, that's what that is. And this is the graph of it. This is the graph of f of x. We do a full calc just to. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Now look here. Right now. My line, of course, is not tangent to the curve because my h is uh, rather large. Let me just click on that, and I'll make it 1 over a million. OK, that, that looks like a tangent to the curve. And I can click here and put that line anywhere I want. Actually, I should probably make it even smaller. All right.
right there is you can just barely see it here. This is the tangent to the curve right here. And uh, yeah, let me put it down here. It's a little clearer where it, what's, what's what. Uh, this line is just the x equals 0.57 line. And this is the tangent to the curve. Now what happens if I look at x right at this point here? Well, it's a straight line. If I could get it right on the, the vertex there, that would be a straight line. All right, let me do this. Let me take my picture and change my scale a little bit so that uh, I can uh, get some more detail in there. Let's see what that is. OK. And uh, let's, let's actually change it some more. I want to just change my scale so that I can magnify things a bit. All right, so if I put my x there, my line is, if I could get it right on the vertex, eh, it's hard to do. It's hard to get it right there. But you get the idea. If I could get it right there at the lowest point, my derivative would be 0. In other words, my slope would be 0. And this, this is called the local minimum of this function. And this is called the local maximum. So there it is. Now I got it right on the, the local maximum. And the tangent line has slope 0. So what this is showing is that if we want to find the um, local min and max of uh, a function, we look for the points where the derivative is equal to 0. Actually, let me go. I'm going to make this a little more. Take my y. I don't need that much y. I'm just interested in this here. So let me make my y um, yeah, 0.5. So really get some more, more detail. Ooh, that's not so good. OK. I uh, went too far. Y equals 0.5. And let's make my bottom uh, where I put it equal to 1. I'm going to let's see if that doesn't bring my picture back in. Almost. I've got to experiment a little bit here. Let me make my graph start here. Yeesh. 0.5. .25. Could have been a little. Oh, geez. All right, that's good enough. We'll have to leave it like that. Uh, again, now this is a local minimum. So if I put my x there, I should be able to uh, get that line exactly straight. Well, it's kind of hard to do, but you can see how you could solve for um, these local max and minimum. You just take this function here, and you set it equal to 0. So I'm taking the derivative and setting it equal to 0. And let me, I don't need this. Uh, equal to 0. And then you solve for x. And the easiest way to do that is probably just to factor that thing on the left. Let's see if uh, if the program will be able to do that. So we want to factor all terms. That's this one here. Factor all terms. OK. So it's telling us that one of our max or min is x equals 0. And that's pretty obvious. You know, so let's go up here and put x equal to 0. And there's there's a max. And this is telling us that the others occur when 10x squared minus 1 equals 0. Yeah. So we can solve that thing then for x. And to do that, we just put x squared into our slot there and ask the program to solve for x squared and then take the square root. So uh, that gives us, you know, the square root is plus or minus. So this x will give us 1. 
and let's actually plug that into X. I can do that by just dragging and dropping onto there. And there it is. That's the minimum right there. And if I want the other minimum, I just take the negative of that. And there's the other minimum. So very useful property of the derivative. If you want to know the local min and max, uh, then you just set the derivative to 0 and solve for x. All right, let's do one final thing. Uh, let's look at this function here again. And remember we said that uh, to take the derivative of this thing, you take the derivative of each thing individually and uh, just you know, put them together, adding or subtracting. Let's actually look at that. And it's not a proof, but you'll see, you know, get an idea of, of why it works. So let's do that. And uh, the way we do it is, you know, our definition is this thing here. This is our definition of the derivative. Uh, it's the limit as h goes to 0. And now that's 0 here because we're in, at this point here. Let me move over here so it's something other than 0. Uh, the derivative is 0.98 there. And, uh, you know, why can we, you know, we have sums and differences here. Why does that not give us a problem. Well, let's just work this thing out just like we did before and we'll see how uh, the pieces come together just as they did before. Uh, in other words, we can separate in our minds sort of this piece from this piece from that piece and uh, you know, think of them just as we did in the individual uh, term case. So let's first do this substitution. And now we're just going to expand. Notice we have a uh, h plus x to the fourth because we had a 4 there and an h plus x squared because we had a squared there and uh, we have an x to the fourth because our formula calls for minus f of x and we have an x squared because our formula calls for uh, minus f of x and there's a minus here so it all works out okay. So in other words, the, the same kind of cancellation that we had before is going to take place. If I expand the, these uh, two things here, uh, we notice that if we look through here, we're left with one term without any h in it, and that's the x cubed term just as we did when we were dealing with just x to the fourth by itself. And we're going to have one term in here without uh, any, another term without any h in it. That's this term here, 2x, uh, and just as we did when we were dealing with x squared. And the others all have h in it. So if we let h go to 0, and we can actually just set it equal to 0, as long as h is as long as this formula is defined when h is 0, we can take the limit by just setting h equal to 0. And so we end up with that. So that's sort of a proof that uh, the differentiation process is linear. That's, you know, whenever you can uh, distribute a, an operation across sums and differences, it's said to be a linear. So I think that's enough for this first module.